even think about three different generations that exist in the Democratic Party today. The oldest generation is what I would call the Bill Clinton generation. These are people who came of age politically in the 1970s and 80s. You saw Republicans not just win elections, but win in landslides. You took the lesson that it was a pretty conservative country and that Democrats had to adjust to that. The Obama generation, which is the second generation, it was the generation which is really forged in the 1990s and in the 2000s. The Obama generation is not so convinced as the Clinton generation is that it's a conservative country, that it's a center-right country. They see Republicans winning really, really close elections, or in their minds, elections that maybe weren't even entirely kosher, like the 2000 election. And they also see this big demographic shift. We can be a little bit more progressive because actually the demographics of the country are moving in that direction. You have a divide between what you could call institutionalists and insurrectionists. Institutionalists are people who think that things in America, like the basic building blocks of our economy and our political system, are basically OK. Insurrectionists are people who think that things have gotten so bad that we basically kind of need to blow things up and start from the beginning. And what I think is important to understand is that basically you have insurrectionists and institutionalists in both parties. Jeb Bush is an institutionalist. Joe Biden is an institutionalist. Donald Trump is an insurrectionist. Bernie Sanders is an insurrectionist. So you have these debates that have played out in both parties, basically. And really what happened in a kind of macro sense is the fact that the government couldn't stop 9-11 and then responded to 9-11 with two failed wars and then presided over a financial crisis that caused enormous economic distress and from which a lot of young people still haven't recovered in such a way that it shifted the balance in both parties from the institutionalist to people who said basically things are fundamentally wrong, we got to kind of burn it down and start from the beginning. And so you saw the kind of Donald Trump defeating Jeb Bush and a whole series of institutionalists, and you saw that Bernie Sanders, although he lost to Hillary Clinton, basically able to set the agenda for the Democratic Party. What I think is the third generation, which I would say the generation of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Like the Obama generation, they believe that the country is fundamentally liberal because of these demographic shifts. Economically, this is the generation of people who came of age during the financial crisis, whose experience with American capitalism has been significantly rougher than these prior two generations. It's a generation that um, has watched a president that they generally liked, Barack Obama, that they admired as a person not really be able to do a lot to make their lives that much better. Even with a president of good intentions, you can't really do a lot to really fundamentally change the things that are really hurting people out there. And what you need is a kind of a mass movement to basically restore democracy and change the terms of the debate completely. All of a sudden, much more willing to to, to, to flirt with radical alternatives like socialism, which to them don't seem so un-American. For them, socialism is Denmark. It's not the Soviet Union. Donald Trump picking up on the idea of Venezuela is very, very politically shrewd, right? It's to say socialism is not Denmark. Socialism is Venezuela, especially if you're appealing to an older white base that has anxieties also about America's cultural and demographic change. So it's the perfect fusion of these two things for Donald Trump. I have no idea whether a Democrat will win in 2020. What I would predict is if a Democrat does win in 2020, they will be a kind of fusion or combination of Barack Obama and Donald Trump. Thank you.